Right, we're picking up with the second lecture of chapter 12. So we ended the last lecture talking about alkanes, which are those hydrocarbons with the single double double, or I'm sorry, the single covalent bond between carbons. Um, I'm getting already ahead of myself because these, uh, this group, the alkenes, yeah, I know, um, they named them with very similar names. Um, alkenes are hydrocarbons with a double-double covalent bond. Um, so these are um, those hydrocarbons where you've got a carbon double bonded to a carbon. And so what that means is because of that double bond, you're going to have two fewer hydrogens in the compound. Um, so you can identify an alkene by its formula. So it's going to follow a uh, formula that looks like this. So we saw this in the alkanes. The alkanes, it was uh, carbon N. H2N plus 2. Well, because we have two fewer hydrogens, now it's just carbon N, H2N. So we don't have any single carbon alkenes. We have to have two carbons because we need that double bond. So we're going to start with carbon 2 and we're going to have a hydrogen and it's going to be N times 2, so we know that the first alkene is carbon 2H4. So the next one up in the line would be C3H6 because it would be 3 times 2. Okay. So the simplest alkene is called ethene. Um, so we had ethane for the alkane version. Um, the simplest alkene, which is the C2H4, is ethene. Sometimes it's called ethylene. And ethylene is used to make plastic, like these Ziploc bags that are here. So um, we'll see this later in a lecture um, in this chapter called polyethylene, um, where poly, you put a bunch of them together. And then Ethylene is also the gas that fruits are contain that make them ripen. So plants use ethylene gas to ripen the fruits that contain their seeds. This is actually why if you put a fruit in a plastic bag, it will actually ripen uh, because the ethylene from the plastic bag will actually cause it to ripen. And this is also why if you have three tomatoes like what you see here in the picture, this green one uh, will start to ripen faster than normal because it's trapped in the bag with the gas from these other tomatoes. So this allows us now to talk about the concept of saturated versus unsaturated hydrocarbons. So an unsaturated organic molecule does not contain the maximum number of hydrogen um, atoms possible. So what do we mean by that? So the maximum number of hydrocarbons in an organic molecule means that there are no double bonds. So if there are double bonds or triple bonds between the carbons, then you know that you have an unsaturated organic molecule. Because what we're talking about with saturated versus unsaturated is the hydrogen atoms. So if we look, for example, down here at ethane, Ethane is considered a saturated hydrocarbon or a saturated organic molecule because there's no double bond between the carbons and the maximum number of hydrogens are attached to that molecule. Versus ethylene over here. So ethylene has a double bond between the carbons, which means you could actually put more hydrogens onto that molecule. Um, if you break one of these bonds in the double bond, you could add those two extra hydrogens. 
So an unsaturated organic molecule is less stable uh, because it has that option to add more hydrogen. And this makes them more reactive. This is why ethane, the alkanes, are not as reactive as the other hydrocarbons uh, because they are completely full of those hydrogens, so they are not going to react very easily versus something like ethylene, an unsaturated organic molecule, which has this double bond, but it could still hold more hydrogen atoms to become a saturated molecule. So there we've got them labeled now. So unsaturated over on this side with our ethylene, and we've got saturated over here with our ethane. So we've got one last group of hydrocarbons to talk about, and these are the alkynes. I know, alkane, alkene, alkyne. These are hydrocarbons with a carbon-carbon triple bond. So carbon-carbon triple bonds have two less hydrogen atoms than an alkene. So we've got, again, another formula similar to our last one, only now because we have another two Hydrogen's gone. It's Cn, H2n minus 2. So um, again, we cannot have a single carbon atom because we have a triple bond. So our smallest alkene, I'm sorry, alkyne um, is C2. And then we've got H, so 2n would be 2 times 2 minus 2. So we've got H2 because we've got 4 minus 2 would be H2. So C2, H2. And this is this group is highly reactive because of that triple bond. So just like we saw in the last slide with saturated versus unsaturated, these are highly unsaturated because if you look over here at the structure on this guy, it's got those triple bonds, lots and lots of space to put in more hydrogen. The simplest alkyne is ethyne. You actually don't know it by that name. You know it by this name, acetylene. Acetylene is what you see being used here. Um, it's most commonly used in welding, and this is showing off its high reactivity. You use it with oxygen, ignite it, and you get super high heat, um, and that is actually it reacting with the oxygen um, in the air and recombining so that these um, bonds break and reform into new molecules and um, compounds. So if you do burn it in welding torches, um, you get temperatures, like I said, highly reactive, um, up to 3,000 degrees Celsius. So very, very reactive group um, in the alkynes. So here are the three groups together with their group name their general formula we saw on each of those pages, and then an example compound. In this case, it's the most simple example compound for the group except for the alkanes. Remember, the alkanes do have methane. So that group here, this is um, the second one. So with alkanes, this one also has the CH4. Okay, but that's the only one that has a single carbon because it doesn't require a carbon-carbon bond in order to make it into that group. All right, so there is another group um, that are special hydrocarbons that we'll see on and off throughout this chapter, and those are the aromatic hydrocarbons. These are compounds that have what we call a benzene ring structure. So how do we get what we call a benzene ring? Well, these are formed when you get uh, six carbons and six hydrogens creating a structure. So if we take a look over here, the six carbons form a ring, and then you've got the six hydrogens bound to them. 
And if you count it up, the bond number isn't correct. And so what you need to have in order to get the bond number correct, to get the right number of electrons, is that you need to have three double bonds between the carbons. The thing is, is that these electrons are what we call delocalized electrons because what they can do is they can swap between carbons. So if you look at these two pictures here, the double bonds aren't in the same place. So here the double bond is on the right hand side of the compound. Over here it is, whoop, nope, on the left hand side of the compound. Um, and so what we do when we draw these aromatic hydrocarbons is we draw them like this, this benzene ring, so the six-sided structure, the hexagon, with a circle inside. Um, because what this shows us is that these bonds are moving around from carbon to carbon. These do not react easily to add hydrogen. So unlike what we saw with um, the alkenes and the alkynes, aromatic hydrocarbons do not like to add hydrogen to their ring. They are pretty stable. Uh, but the reason why they're called the aromatic hydrocarbons is because they do have odors. So you might think, well, wait a minute, I have propane at home and I can smell the propane or I, you know, when I light up my um, grill, I can smell the propane. That smell is actually an additive. We add um, those odors to things like propane and natural gas because hydrocarbons do not have an odor unless they belong to this aromatic hydrocarbon group. The, um, the smell is actually coming from these benzene rings. The other hydrocarbons do not have an odor and that's actually what makes them dangerous for us. And so that's why we add um, odor to propane and butane and so forth so that we can smell them if there is some sort of leak. So the main um, hydrocarbon group that we're going to be looking at where these alkynes, alkanes, alkenes show up is petroleum. I'm going to actually stop at this point for this lecture and pick up with our next lecture so that I can do all of the petroleum in one lecture.